Hi hey folks, so we are going to be talking about the last uh, enzyme that we were for this pathway, the pentose phosphate pathway, and it's transaldolase. Now this is very similar to what we saw with aldolase in glycolysis, which took an F6P and split it into a G3P or GAP and a D dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Which is a three carbon reaction. It breaks a six into two threes, or it can put uh, a two threes into a six. It's reversible. So in this case, aldolase is going to do a three carbon transfer. That's what the trans and aldolase is. So transaldolase is a three carbon transfer. So how is it going to do that? Well, we saw in transketolase that the TPP cofactor was used to do two carbon transfers, and that's largely because of where the positive nitrogen is. In this case, we're going to use a shift base. And there's other videos on this channel uh, that dis discuss how to make and undo shift bases. This mechanism is going to include all of that, and so there's lots of steps here. But really, it all it comes down to is making a shift base, doing a simple step, and then undoing a shift base over and over. So um, I'll show you how this works. So in this enzyme, we have a couple of, of uh, aspartic acid, glutamic acids, uh, a lysine, which is going to be used for the shift base. Remember, a shift base uh, looks like this, C double bond N, the positive nitrogen. So we're going to make that with this lysine. And we also have an ordered water molecule in this. So there's going to be some interesting uh, chemistries with that water. So what we need to do here is we need to uh, attack. We need to start doing some some basic attacks here. So um, we're going to attack using our nucleophilic lysine, but we have to make it nucleophilic first. We have to pull off one of those hydrogens so it has a lone pair to work with. So first we're going to do this. Pull the hydrogen off the water. Water is going to actually pull the hydrogen off of the lysine. And it's going to give the pair back. In this case we're going to attack at the carbon here. And we're going to give a pair to oxygen. Now the attack is going to come on one face and so that means that this oxygen is going to swing to the right side. So here we have a intermediate here. We have our lysine attached covalently to our cytoheptulose 7-phosphate from the transketolase step. We have an O-. minus. That's going to be easy enough for you to pull that hydrogen. Nothing special there. So now we have our OH and our N. We have our, our carbonolamine intermediate here, and uh, now we have to try to get that OH off. So we can push this off with this nitrogen, but we have to protonate. So what we're going to do is protonate using the water, and then we're going to reprotonate the water using the aspartic acid. And that's going to give us our shift base. So here's our shift base. We've, uh, we've lost a water molecule. It's floating away somewhere in the solution. And our shift base is here. Now, remember with, t uh, with transketolase, we had TPP. And remember we had to have our electronegative atom uh, two carbons away. If we're going to break a carbon-carbon bond. Carbon-carbon bond will break if the electronegative atom is two carbons away. So we need to number down from our electronegative. Here's one carbon, there's our alpha. Here's our beta carbon, and so it means we're going to break at this position, two carbons away from the electronegative. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to do our break. So this aspartic acid over here is going to be doing our bond making and breaking. So it's going to pull a hydrogen here. This should start to look pretty familiar. We're going to make a double bond O. We're going to break octet at this carbon if we don't do something about breaking the next carbon bond. So we're going to shove that onto this carbon-carbon bond and break the bond. And we're going to give electrons to the nitrogen. Remember, N must get electrons. And this is going to work. It's exactly the same arrow push as TPP, but TPP puts the nitrogen into a ring a little farther away than this shift base. And so that gives us a two carbon split instead of a three carbon split. In this case, we have our nitrogen right next to it, and so that means that our alpha beta is one carbon farther, so we do a, a one, two, 
three carbon transfer. So we've made this bottom four off of that original seven. We have a three carbon stuck onto the enzyme. And we have the other four that are free. This is called erythros four P. And if you know your some of your kind of arcane uh, organic chemistry and nomenclature, erythro means these two groups on this are on the same side. Uh, there's also a 3O, which would mean they're different. Um, in this case, this is erythros. And that's going to go off uh, back to transketolase in the next step, which we'll use to uh, mix with a, with a E5P or a XU5P. E4P plus XU5P is going to make us a fructose 6 phosphate and a GAP. So that's free to go. That's our first product is released, but we still have our three carbons attached to the enzyme. So we need to do several steps to get that off. Now remember, this is transaldolase. So we have to transfer it onto another, onto another substrate. In this case, we're going to be using a gap, which was from the last step, G3P. Uh, the last step being from transketolase. So E4P leaves, gap comes in. So here's our G3P, our glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate from the last, uh, from transketolase. So now what are we going to do? Well, remember that we have a resonance form here. We can say this is the same as making our shift base back. So there's lots of reactivity here at this carbon. You can see there's actually a negative charge built up there. So we're going to use that to do our attack. So we're going to first push, and then we're going to use that pair to attack here. And where are we going to protonate from? Yes, it's from the one that does making and breaking bonds. So now we've literally attached is three carbons onto this three carbons to make a six carbon. Um, remember for transketolase, the old uh, carbonyl always goes left. For transaldolase, it always goes right. So just remember that kind of distinction. Okay, so now we have a six carbon sugar. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's just a matter of getting it off. And so we're going to undo our shift base here relatively easily. We can do this. Pull the hydrogen just like we did started this reaction with. We're going to use this in a to attack, and we're going to give the pair back to nitrogen. So now we've attached our OH, and we have our intermediate back. So there's our OH and H. If we're going to finish this, we need to then pull that hydrogen, make a double bond, and we'll attack here to kick off the lysine. Now we have fructose 6 phosphate. Now that should look familiar. That's going to go straight back into the hexose monophosphate pool. and be used to fuel pentose phosphate or glycolysis or glycogen synthesis depending on which it's isomerized into um, or mutated into rather so looks pretty good uh, we only have one more thing to do and that's to recharge our enzyme back to where it started and all we have to do here is just pull the hydrogen off here and then we're back to where we started with this enzyme and fructose 6-phosphate can be released into the next HMP and go about um, its business making more energy. So we've recycled all those carbons that we made from PPP back into either the HMP, uh, or we're actually going to make, in transketolase, we're also going to make a gap, so that's going to go right into glycolysis. So all those carbons are maintained and used for full energy production, plus they've made the NADPH we needed uh, from the pentose phosphate pathway. So everything is going great with this pathway. So finished, recharged enzyme, and final substrate. Thanks, guys.